Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Today is November 12th, it's Friday. Uh, the market's been closed for about uh, 20 minutes or so. This is your weekly take on the market. I'm your host, my name is Scott St. Clair. I'm the product group manager here at IBD. Here is the disclaimer. Take a moment to read it. We will talk about stocks, ETFs, et cetera. We are not licensed. Okay, so the gauges, you know, it's, I think you can argue, a little, you know, maybe if there's a color between uh, green and yellow, but I, the market's fine. It's, it's, it's not great, but it's fine. Uh, the leadership, again, not great, but it's fine. There's, you know, it, it moves around. The leadership changes pretty fast. Got to kind of stay on top of it, but it's hard to argue with the, uh, the, the direction of the market. Uh, Rivian went public and proceeded to go up 20%, you know, from like 100 to 125 or something. You know, if the market was in trouble, Rivian, a company with no revenue, would, would not go from 100 to 125. You have to learn to, to get the feel for the, what I like to call, and I didn't coin the term, but animal spirits of the market. Is the market willing to be more speculative? Are they willing to give certain companies slash stocks a pass? Uh, there are some landmines out there. You know, if you're in a Chegg, and it can be down 50% in one day. Uh, UPST didn't have a very good um, reaction to the report. I, you know, I don't really worry too much about the, the numbers, but on the surface, the numbers looked fine. So those are little things that you, you do to build the puzzle. And then, you know, is your portfolio green? Are you making progress? Uh, so we'll go through the markets. We'll do the industry groups, we'll do stocks to watch. Um, and then I have a couple of quotes because I, I don't really have much to say about the market. I think it's really kind of the same thing as last week, all right? So uh, I built in two quotes because I felt like I might uh, run out of time, but we'll see. Sometimes I think I won't have enough time and end up going long. So here is a chart of the NASDAQ. And you had kind of a nasty day um, Wednesday, and then Thursday the market was up, and Friday today it had a, had a pretty strong day. So you know you're going to have bad days a, a, around a, a once in a while on an uptrend. My thing with the market is it never really has a bunch of bad days in a row. Usually it shakes off a couple of bad days. So here you you kind of did, but here look one two bad days and then back in an uptrend. One, two, two and a half bad days. You know, that would have been a tough day uh, on the open and then the next day, but then, you know, back in an uptrend. So it's hard. You have to kind of shake off those bad days. And, and the problem is one of these times, those bad days are going to lead to much more bad days and you'd wish you'd done some selling here. So I always do some selling on the way up which either allows me to survive this day, or if I do some selling again, um, it's not as bad. I don't have to react too much. If I'm 60% invested, take myself to 40. And then after a couple of days, I might say, you know what? The market should have continued down. It didn't. Maybe I'll go back to 60. But that's just how, how I prefer to do it. And it's just a personality thing because I know if I'm, if I, let's go back to the NASDAQ, if I'm, you know, loaded up in UPSTs of the world, Airbnbs, AMBA was a stock that I owned that I sold on the way up. We'll pull that up. I won't survive this day because it'll just look too bad. I won't be able to handle the, the volatility and I'll do much more selling on a, on this day than I know is, is proper. I know you, I just kind of knew the market was going to be up the next day. That still might lead to more downside. That's always a possibility, but lately the market, you know, gives you a couple of bad days and then it, it rallies a couple of bad days and then it rallies. Well, here's three or four down days, but I would really say maybe two, two and a half are really bad, and then it rallies. So if it breaks that trend, then I'll change with it. Uh, the S&P looks fine, more than fine, all right? IWM looks fine, right? More than fine. And um, But there are some, uh, some uh, cracks in the armor. ARK looks very, very toppy, A-R-K-K. -K. 
this looks like a, um, actually a short to me. And if, if I was more aggressive and more, um, you know, if I felt like the market had more downside, if this was 1999, I would be aggressively shorting or 2000 because I was aggressively shorting in 2000 because the market just couldn't hold a bit. I would be shorting this. But two things that bother me, it's an obvious short. Everybody knows it's a real bull bear debate, you know, with, with ARC. So that bothers me. Um, it's one of the reasons it keeps me kind of sanguine about it, if that's the right word. You know, watch it, recognize the really bad relative strength, but I'm just fearful of too many eyeballs on it and to the market. You know, the market's not going to allow it to go down. But if the market were to get really weak, this, this looks like it would have another leg lower. And, you know, it's made a massive move. It's gone from 20 to, to 160. That's an eight-fold move. And if you look back at, you know, other big moves in, in you know, this is, an, this is an ETF. This is a, you know, diversified fund. Uh, I remember Janus 20 was very popular in the 90s before it uh, lost its way and, and just crumbled between 2000 and 2004. I wish I could pull up the chart, but it doesn't exist. There's one thing about mutual funds. When they go bad, they just take them away. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on is, is ARC doesn't look very good at all. Um, and uh, so some of the stocks that, that, you know, the type of disruptors that so to speak are, are not acting super well. Um, okay, the industry groups, let's go there. Not a whole lot of changes. Energy coal is still number one, even though this, the, a lot of these stocks look very toppy, like they've topped or need new bases. Uh, this is a huge move. I mean, this is an industry group that almost tripled, but you know, BTU, you know, that's broken. It's really broken. You know, maybe it, this is the left side of the base at best. Uh, but that was kind of the one that came up. What's METC look like? Not as bad, but it looks broken to me. CEIX broken. Arch, huh, not so bad. So if I had to buy one, that would be the one. But um, that group looks looks tired at best. Uh, semiconductor Fabulous is number two. Retail department stores is three. Boot, DDS look very extended, uh, very uh, very offensive sellish um, candidates, especially DDS boots. That looks offensive sellish to me, but DDS, that, that's to me, that's a screaming sell. I, I'm fairly certain DDS will be lower than that in six months. Will be higher in three. My experience is yes. <laughs> when if I were to sell that, it'd probably go to 400 first, and then you know we'll look back and it'll be 200 in six months. But that looks very offensive sellish. Uh, let's see here. Oil and gas, consumer loans. That's UPST. Energy solar is 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 has come back. ENPH is like a champ. Breaks out of this double bottom, um, just holding really really strong. Auto, you know, Tesla, Rivian now will be a part of that. And so, you know, there's, there's, some, um, there's, there's some groups that you could be uh, trafficking in. And I like the, the diversity of the groups. You can own a department store. You can own oil and gas. You can own a solar stock. You can own an auto manufacturer. And you've got concentration in good groups, but yet, you know, kind of diversified, so to speak, across different uh, types of groups. Okay, so stocks to watch. Let's go to AMBA. Now it's righted itself. It looks fine on the weekly chart, but this is what I'm talking about. If I don't sell on the way up, um, that cut type of day, you know, down 17 points, it's going to get me out. So um, you've got your first uh, bad break. It's, it's a defensive sell, the largest price point move down. It's still kind of early in the move out of the base. So keep that in mind. But everything happens so much faster now. So a lot of these rules for length of period that, that Bill has, has talked about in his book, remember those were written in 1988. And I don't know, I'm not, I just feel like everything is in fast forward nowadays. Uh, you know, Rivian can go public and be worth more than Ford and they've never, you know, with zero revenue. 
It's just everything is on full speed ahead. Um, but that also leaves no room for error. So, you know, if there's if there's any type of error, Chegg, you know, you get this type of just disastrous. Now, you know, I, I'm pretty certain or hopeful that nobody watching this would have been in Chegg. I mean, it wasn't, it was just, you know, it's just not on a radar. But this type of action can, can happen. Peloton, uh, there was another one that got down really bad that I was trying to think of. So everything is just fast forward, you know, it's just boom, done, bear market, you know, down 70%. Average, uh, you know, from peak to peak to trough, average correction is in the 70%, but they just occur so much faster uh, nowadays. So AMBA, if you're in that one, you know, you, you probably have, or hopefully you have some type of rule. Weekly chart looks fine. Daily's you know, first uh, shot across the bow, so to speak. Uh, Roblox, amazing move on the earnings report. I don't like to buy like that um, because this is what I'm afraid of the second day. I like to buy like this. When they gap up, I just watch them all day. It's very hard because sometimes they'll keep going, but I want to I want to capture that weakness when when they're all getting stopped out. So when it breaks below this low. I like to buy it on the way back up from that low and, and participate in the shakeout, right? Shakeouts are good unless you're in them. So a lot of people put their stop um, below the, the gap up low. I don't know where that rule came from. It sounds neat in theory. I'm not certain it tests well. I'm not going to test it. I don't need to. I just have observed enough instances where um, – Sometimes they keep going, but a lot of times they come down and they get that stock. They get those guys, shake them out, and boom, it came back really fast. That's from a weekly standpoint. This name looks really strong. Uh, it's not the same. Don't don't uh, um, don't mistake my enthusiasm for how the chart looks for extrapolating forward. But if you go to Microsoft when it first went public. Uh, when did Microsoft go public? In the 80s, probably, right? 85, maybe. And again, this goes to prove that I don't um, prepare well enough ahead of time like I should, but I had this on the brain. Looks very similar to Roblox's chart, right? Pull, pull those two up. Wow. Looks so similar. So when I saw that, I was like, ah. Maybe, maybe this is really going to get going. Now, what did Microsoft do? Well, it was a different market. Just kept going and going, I think. Right? All the way into the 87 crash. Where it got torched like everything, right? Let's, oops. Anyways, oops, I, I didn't, I don't know why I did that, but um, you get the idea. Uh so, I don't know. There's the crash of 87 for Microsoft. So those look very similar. That's why I, I like Roblox, but it's not quite the same company as Microsoft. I don't think it extrapolates forward of the, the TAM, so to speak. But I do know my son loves playing it. All his friends play it. It's um, a company that I actually have subscription to for him. Uh, and um, they're just taking, I don't know what it is, $10 out of my account each each month. And so, you know, maybe there's something something to that uh, type of setup. Uh, Airbnb, let's go to the daily. Gaps up on earnings. Didn't quite undercut. I was really hoping it would undercut, and it didn't. And then today it got going. So this one's acting really well. So those are two potential new names that have jumped out at me. Uh, Tesla, I think the jury's out. I don't know, if, you know, this, I know this is a, the, the, a big base, uh, but it's, it's really truly a late stage base. I, I know that Marcus Smith says it's second stage, but you know, if you were to go to a monthly chart, um, you know, this is, this is a really late stage base. I don't know. I probably, if I was in that and I'm not, I would be trimming for sure, uh, for sure. 
but I know I, Charles Harris, and I've seen stories of people that have just hodled this thing forever, and they've made a bloody fortune. So um, you know they've they've uh, they've gotten it right. I, the only thing with that is I just don't know what si if you're going to ignore every single cell signal. I don't know what what signal you're going to use to get yourself out. That's the hard part. I find that's the very hardest part about having a really big winner is they're going to give you multiple cell signals on the way up that you're going to have to ignore if you're going to catch something for 18, 24 months. And what else? So UPST, that looks broken. You know, game over, who knows? But broken, needs a new base. Affirm, not too bad, held up a little bit better from a weekly. Uh, that, that one has held up. Uh, a little bit better than um, than UPST. Okay, so let's go to uh, the quote of the week. We're gonna do two of them. Uh, Ferez, uh, I'm sorry, F Fayez Serafin, and I apologize, I probably butchered his name. So uh, this gentleman, a famous money manager, people used to ask him, what's the next Teledyne? And his famous response was, the next Teledyne is Teledyne when you got something right. And Thomas Gaynor uh, was talking about this. He's a portfolio manager at Markle Corporation. It's an insurance company that uses their money to invest, a la the Berkshire Hathaway model. And I, this is one thing, if I could go back in time into 1995 and, and give myself like, you know, three or four things to think about, this is one of them. Because in my career, one thing that I've, I've always been on like the NVIDIA is a good example, Apple, Google. Uh, it's like, oh, I've missed it. It's doubled. It's tripled. It's quadrupled. It's gone up eightfold. Uh, I've missed it. Tesla, I've missed it. And the next Tesla is Tesla. The next NVIDIA has been NVIDIA. Uh, and so when you have something right, don't be afraid to go to, go to it, even if it shakes you out, but to go back to it and keep doing it until it stops. And the last time you do it, you might get hurt, you might lose, you might give back a bunch of profits. But man, if it's a Teledyne or an Nvidia or a Google, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have so much built up from doing that. So this is something that I think about a lot uh, from you know getting better at that, like going forward. Uh, it, you know, it's like I was in Nvidia and the in you know pre-split in the 200s and it's like now it's hard a lot harder after it's doubled or tripled to to think about oh well where can it go well it can double or triple again it can over and over and over they're not these companies aren't going to stop doing what they're doing once the stock has doubled microsoft in in 1986 they didn't just close the doors right we doubled the stock price we're going to close the doors and call it a day, right? They doubled it again and doubled it again and doubled again. I, I really would love to know how many times Microsoft has doubled. Uh, I bet somebody out there maybe knows. It, it's 200 times? I don't know. It must be some astronomical number. So uh, don't give up on something, a quality company. Don't start, go looking. I, you know, I have a friend I'd work with and, and um, he would, we'd, we'd be looking at stocks, we're trading side by side and he'd say, man, have you seen, um, XYZ, God, XYZ is so strong. We should buy ABC. ABC is in the same group as XYZ. And, and that's the natural inclination is that, that ABC will play catch up. And, and eventually I started to say to him, why, why don't we just buy XYZ? That's the one that's going up. Why bother with that other one? So food for thought uh, as far as you know, leading stocks. The next one is about um, position size. I think position size is everything in this game. Managing your positions, uh, you 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 want to have enough that it makes a difference, but not too much that you can handle it right. I, I think that's the, the, one of the best quotes in the market. I don't know where I got that, but you want to have enough of the stock that if you get it right, it it moves the needle on your whole portfolio, but not too much that you can't handle it right. So uh, this gentleman, Imanshu Gulati, he was on a, a podcast and he said, having a lot of small 25, 50, 1% positions. And I, I presume he meant 25 basis points, 50 basis point positions, because he's running a you know big money of fun is usually a way to not generate returns. Also, you end up losing. 
death by a million paper cuts because you just keep getting out of stocks that aren't working. What we prefer to do is have more three to 5% positions where we do have high conviction. Remember in the money management world, a three to 5% position is, is huge. Go look at Fidelity Contra, look at Lord Abbott, T. Rowe Price, New Horizons. Just go look at their holdings. What are their biggest holdings? I think Fidelity Contra has like 8% Amazon. That's a monster position in Amazon. But he has a lot of, you know, half 1% positions. So three to five is really, really big in their world. For you and I, to me, three to five is a little small. Uh, I prefer 10 is kind of my minimum position if I'm in sync. If I'm not in sync, then I, uh, I, my minimum position is five, but I will have as much as a 40% position if I feel like I'm starting to get it right. Now, I've, I've had larger than 40 before, but going back to my previous quote, I, I didn't handle those right. Like I, I think I mentioned, I had all my, my money in uh, Facebook one time and didn't handle it right. It was just too much. It was just the, the ebbs and flows were just... Uh, too much for me. So I, I've found that, you know, 40 is like my ceiling. I've even, even now I have a 40, I have like a 37% position in, in, in a name now. And I watch it a lot. So I know that I'm pushing the maximum threshold on that position because I, each little tick uh, kind of, uh, you know, bothers me or makes me elated. You know, I start thinking of, all the cars and houses I'm going to um, buy when that, when it goes up. So I, I think I'm pushing maximum threshold. I think maybe I'll probably pull it back. Something I'll think about this weekend, but think about position sizing. It's highly, highly, highly important. Okay. Reach us at marcusmith.com 800-831-2525. Uh, at Marcus Smith is our company. Um, um, Twitter handle and mine is at Zen in the markets. I, I don't tweet that much, but I, I do um, have a, an account. So, uh, um, but I don't really give a lot of ideas and stuff because of compliance. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, next week is uh, maybe I'm wishful thinking next week is not Thanksgiving weekend. So one more of these. And then uh, finally, Thanksgiving weekend, one of my favorite weeks. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.